Hi folks, we're going to take a look at, uh, this is page 270, number 29. All right, so let's see what's going on here. Uh, so we've got a dish of bacteria which is infected with a disease, and this equation models the number of bacteria that will have the disease after D days. Okay, so they want to know how many days will pass before the maximum number of bacteria are infected, and then determine that maximum number of bacteria. All right, so since we're looking for a maximum, of course, we're going to be taking the derivative and finding the critical points. So let's start with that. So the derivative of n with respect to d is going to be given by, well, we're going to have to use the product rule here. So derivative of the first function is 15 times the second function, so e to the negative d over 5, and then plus the first function, 15d, times the derivative of the second function. Well, we're going to have to use a chain rule there. So this will be like our u value. Derivative of e to the u is e to the u. So e to the negative d over 5 times the derivative of negative d over 5. Well, that's just negative 1 fifth. Okay, and since we're looking for the critical points, we want to determine when this derivative is equal to zero. So let's uh, simplify. So 15 e to the negative d over 5. And so here we're going to end up with minus 15 times 1 fifth is 3 d times e to the negative d over 5. All right. Uh, so the thing you want to look for here is to hopefully put it in factored form, and we see that we do have some common factors. So we have a common factor of 3, and more importantly, we have the common factor of e to the negative d over 5. So in the end, we're just left with, uh, that's going to be 5, that's gone, that's gone, and all we're left with is d here. All right. So uh, we have an expression in factored form equal to 0. So 3 can't be equal to 0. e to the negative d over 5 is never equal to 0. So the only thing that can make this expression 0 is the 5 minus d. So we have our only critical point is d equals 5. So we just have to check that 5 does indeed um, um, give us a maximum value. All right. So let's check our derivative here. 5, and I'll take 4 on one side, uh, 6 on the other. Now, again, this is our simplified form of the derivative. 3 is always positive. e to the negative d over 5 is always positive. So we only have to look at that uh, linear factor there. So when d is equal to 4, 5 minus 4 is 1, so positive. And when d is equal to 6, 5 minus 6 gives me a negative derivative. So this is indeed going from increasing to decreasing. So that is a max. Okay. Now, the other thing to think about is that we're starting at zero days. So we see that this function is increasing up until five and then continually decreasing from six on. So it's not just a uh, local max. In this domain, it represents an absolute max. All right. So here, our answer uh, will be after uh, five days. And now let's answer B. They want to know, determine the maximum number of bacteria that will be infected. Well, we'll just take our answer and put it into the original equation. So we're looking for N at 5. So that's uh, 15 times 5 times E to the negative 5 over 5. So this is going to be 5 times 15 is 75. And this is going to be E to the negative 1, so divided by E. So we're going to approximate that. Oh, sorry. I can see that now. Okay, let's get our calculator. And, and let's approximate this. So we've got 75 divided by uh, E is about 2.718. So there we've got 27.6. All right. But of course, uh, we can't have 27.6 bacteria. So the question is, do we round up or down? Well, I guess this tells us that after five days, we don't quite have a full 28 that have been infected. Uh, so I'm actually going to round that down, okay? Because we know for certain that 27 will have been uh, infected. So uh, 27 is max number of bacteria infected. 
All right, so let's just do a recap here. So step number one was to realize that despite the um, the context and the function that we were given, we were essentially, it was just an optimization question on this function here. So we had to find the derivative, determine when it's equal to zero. We found our critical point. We established that it was indeed a an absolute maximum on the domain we were interested in, since we're only interested in d greater than zero. And then from there, we were able to input it into the function to determine the uh, maximum value. All right, that's it for this one.